Every year when the draft comes around, there is so much talk about the few who are at the top of that list, the bona fide, almost guaranteed NHL superstars that will instantly change a franchise. But it can be argued that the guys that are chosen later on in the draft, who go on to become key pieces on a team, are even more valuable. Because at the time, it's not as obvious. Just like the guaranteed superstars in the draft every year, there are these players taken outside of the top 10 that are looked back on as steals. And those are the types of guys that we're going to be going over in this video. Hey, it's Matt from Puck Rivals, and today Billy and I are going to go over our picks for who we think will be potential sleepers in this year's draft. Luckily for us, the 2020 draft is looking to be one of the deepest ones in recent years. So hopefully that means we have a better chance of being right, right? Probably not though. Let us know in the comments some of the guys you think that are potential sleepers in this draft. And with that, let's get into the video. Now this is going in no specific order, but first off we have Seth Jarvis of the Portland Winterhawks in the WHL, who ranked 11th for North American skaters by Central Scouting and 18th in Bob McKenzie's final rankings, which puts him in the mid to late first round pick range. Jarvis finished second in the WHL in scoring, with 42 goals and 98 points in 58 games on a strong Winterhawks team. What's even more impressive about his point totals is how he did it. Jarvis struggled through the first part of the season, but then absolutely caught fire and scored 63 points in his final 26 games before the season was shut down because of coronavirus. He also put up a respectable 4 points in 5 games at the Helenka Gretzky Cup last summer for Team Canada. In Jarvis, you have a player who's a very good skater, who's agile and good on his edges. His ability to change directions quickly makes it difficult for defensemen to cover him. He's a player with great vision and can score in a variety of ways. Jarvis features a quick release and can beat goalies with his accurate and powerful shot. One weak point about Jarvis is his lack of size and strength, but over time that's something that can be developed. With the offensive skill set that Jarvis has, a team would be really lucky if he fell into their laps in the back half of the first round. It's no small feat to put up the season that he did, leading the next team member by 28 points. He can end up being a very effective top-line winger, and is potentially where he is due to his slow start and being in the shadow of the forwards highlighted in the top 10 of this draft. Next we have Jacob Perot of the Sarnia Sting in the OHL. The son of former NHLer Yannick Perot was ranked 17th for North American skaters by Central Scouting and 21st in Bob McKenzie's rankings, projecting him as a late first round pick. Perot finished the season in the OHL with 39 goals and 70 points in 57 games, on a weak and rebuilding Sarnia team. The scoring winger possesses an elite skating ability with blazing speed and acceleration. He has a deceptive release and like Jarvis is a versatile scorer. Pro is the type of player that is capable of running a power play and has great vision and hockey IQ to get open and make plays. His biggest critique overall is his defensive game and has been known to make costly mistakes that lead to good scoring chances the other way. Whatever team drafts him will have to really work on developing that because as of right now it is still a work in progress. I think the most intriguing thing about Pro is how he has produced on a team that wasn't very good around him, and if he played on a better team, his skill would be even more present. Pro would be considered more of a sleeper pick, because a team picking him would essentially be buying low on a player who is on a weak team and willing to try to take the chance at rounding out his defensive game. But as a player who's been given the stylistic comparison of Matt Barzell, I'd definitely take that risk late in the first round on Pro. The third player that we consider a potential sleeper in this draft is defenseman William Villeneuve of the St. John Sea Dogs of the QMJHL. And this one is a very interesting potential sleeper. Despite leading all defensemen in the Q in scoring with 58 points in 64 games this year, he was ranked 99th for North American skaters by Central Scouting and was limited just to an honorable mention in Bob McKenzie's rankings. But on the other hand, Scott Wheeler from The Athletic has Villeneuve at 38th on his list, and that's more of the opinion we end up agreeing with. What also adds to making this so interesting is that his deep partner for a good part of the season, Jeremy Poirier, I probably messed that up, but he's ranked around the 20 to 30 range, much farther ahead of Villeneuve, who right now is projected to be taken around the third round. But in Villeneuve, you have someone who's a strong skater with very good gap control. He also possesses a quick release that is accurate and can get through traffic. He plays a very effective transition game and makes a good first pass out of the zone. Villeneuve also has great defensive instincts and positioning, and doesn't play a flashy game like his defense partner Poirier. The major knock on Villeneuve is his lanky frame at 6'1 and 175 pounds, where some of the reason for him being ranked as low as he is just has to do with doubting his ability to bulk up enough to be able to win battles at higher levels. But he displays very good hockey IQ and is a smart defensive player with great offensive ability as well. It's definitely worth taking the risk on a guy like Villeneuve, because with a couple years of fine tuning and bulking up in junior, he could turn into an effective number two defenseman and a steal of a third round pick if that's where he goes. 
Now I'm going to let Billy take over and reveal our last four players that we think are sleepers in this draft. Take it away, Billy. So next up, we have a winger from the OHL on the Barry Colts. It's Tyson Forster. The lowdown on Forster is that he's a goal scorer. He's got a diverse and lethal shot selection, which makes him absolutely deadly on the power play. He managed to score 36 goals this year in the competition, and is slated to go in the late first round or early second round. Choosing Forster around here would be very good value for that pick. He could end up being a top line player and a deadly power play specialist, and you'd think they would go higher than the late first round or early second round, but he may be ranked this low because he was playing against teams such as Kingston and Niagara, who aren't that good. Next up, again from the OHL, this time from the Hamilton Bulldogs, we have Jan Misak. Misak actually started this year in the Czech Republic and managed to score 9 points in 26 games in the Czech League. And then later he decided he would join the OHL in Hamilton. And he's been adapting to the North American game very well. He's got 25 points in 22 games, which 15 of those are goals. He's not a very flashy player, but he's got good vision and puck handling skills along with a good shot. He's just got to work on his skating. Like Forster, Misak could provide good value for a late first round pick or a second round pick. Misak might be slept on just because of his short stint in the OHL. Moving on again now, we have a defenseman from Sweden, William Wallinder. By the way, I'm terribly sorry if I mispronounce any of these European names. Anyways, Wallinder plays for the famous club Modo in Sweden, and this year he split time between the big club and the junior team. Wallinder possesses a very coveted skating and size combo in today's game. Along with that, he's a puck rushing D-man, and fits the mold of a modern day defenseman. But like many young defensemen, he's got to work on his defensive zone play. While Linder's projected to go in the second round of this year's draft, he could be great value for a second round pick as he's got the ability and the potential to become a top four puck rushing defenseman. And last but certainly not least, we have another Swede, Zion Nybeck. Nybeck is a small but very skilled offensive winger this year in the Junior Swedish League, he managed to score 66 points, 27 goals, in 42 games. He even got a taste of some SHL action in 15 games. Nybeck is projected to go in the second to third round, which, given his skill set and high upside, he's definitely a sleeper. I'm sure the main reason why he's ranked so low is because of his size, but he's still so young and has time to bulk up and build that frame. Plus, today's NHL, size doesn't matter that much anymore. Don't sleep on Nybeck. And on that note, that concludes this video. These are just a few players that could be considered sleepers in this year's upcoming draft. If you've done some of your own research and scouting, please let us know in the comments who you think is a sleeper in this year's draft. Also feel free to discuss in the comments with us if you agree with our selections or if you disagree. We're always open to interacting with you guys in the comments, so let us know. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy hockey content, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. This has been Billy and Matt from Puck Rivals, and we'll see you next time.